Have you ever wanted to see across time and space? What if I told you that you could? That hidden within the recesses of your mind lies the ability to perceive, well, the impossible. That's right, today we're diving deep into the fascinating world of remote viewing. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Metaphysical Moment. I'm your host, Will, and today we're diving into a topic that is so cool, it might just blow your mind. Remote viewing. Now, if you've ever wanted to feel like a Jedi or are just curious about how we might tap into the unseen, well, this episode is for you. So strap in, because we're about to go on a wild ride through time, space, and the powers of the human mind. Okay, let's start with the basics. What exactly is remote viewing? All right, imagine you're sitting in your living room, chilling on a couch, and suddenly you can see what's happening in a different city, a state, or even halfway around the world. Sounds like sci-fi, right? Well, remote viewing is exactly that. It's the ability to perceive information about a distant or unseen target purely using the power of the mind. All right, buckle up, because here's where things get super interesting. See, this ability was actually taken very seriously by intelligence agencies like the CIA and the US military during the Cold War. They even had a classified program called Project Stargate. No, not the sci-fi show. This is actually real life. Now, the program was designed to investigate and develop psychic phenomenon for use in military and espionage purposes. They wanted to see if it was actually possible to view locations or events remotely without physically having to be there. Hmm? Yep, you heard that right. Remote viewing was used in espionage. Now, imagine spying on a secret facility in Russia without ever leaving your base in the United States. Wild, right? And guess what? They found that some people had pretty remarkable abilities to see things miles and miles away. Think about that for a second. There were trained psychic spies who could gather intelligence just by focusing their mind on a distant location. Whoa, right? Now, the military spent millions of dollars on this, maybe even billions of dollars. It wasn't just a flash in the pan experiment. It went on for over 20 years. Now, you might be wondering, all right, but how does this actually work? Well, no one really knows for sure, but we do know that it involves a deep meditative state where the viewer sets aside their conscious mind and allows their subconscious, or maybe even something beyond, to take the wheel. In this state, information starts flowing. They begin to see impressions of the target they're focusing on, and these impressions can come as images, feelings, sounds, or even abstract symbols. So how do you see something without actually using your eyes? Well, that's where things get interesting. See, remote viewing defies what we think we know about the nature of consciousness and reality. It suggests that our minds are not confined to our brains or our bodies. That consciousness is more like a vast network capable of tapping into information far beyond what we can see, hear, or touch. Don't just take my word for it. Let's look at the proof. Over the years, remote viewers have made some jaw-dropping hits. In one famous case, a viewer was able to locate a downed Soviet plane in Africa despite having zero prior knowledge of the crash. In another case, viewers described detailed sketches of top secret facilities that they had never ever seen. Facilities in areas of the world they had never even visited before. And the accuracy, let's just say it's enough to make even the biggest skeptic raise an eyebrow. Now don't get me wrong, remote viewing isn't perfect. It's not like the movies where the viewer instantly sees crystal clear images like a webcam feed. See, the information that comes through can be hazy or fragmented and it often requires practice to interpret correctly. But with enough focus, the results can be shockingly accurate. The cool thing is that almost anyone can learn to remote view. You don't have to be some sort of psychic prodigy. With practice, people have been able to view hidden objects, describe scenes in faraway places, and even predict events. It's like a mental muscle that you have to train. They say it involves tapping into your subconscious or your higher self, and some remote viewers even believe they're accessing a universal consciousness or database of information. It's like Google for the human mind. Aha! So what's the point of remote viewing? Well, now this is where things get really fun. Aside from the espionage angle, it's been used in search and rescue missions to find lost objects and even in solving crimes. Some companies have even tried using remote viewing to predict stock market trends or make big decisions. Imagine if you could see what your competitors are doing just by closing your eyes. <laughs> Talk about a business advantage. Here's a fun fact. One of the most famous remote viewers, Ingo Swan, claimed to have remotely viewed Jupiter before 
the Voyager spacecraft sent back images. He described details that were later confirmed by photos from Voyager. Is your mind blown yet? Mine is. So after all this, you might be thinking, okay, Will, this sounds awesome, but is it real? Well, that, my friend, is the million dollar question. Skeptics will tell you that remote viewing is just coincidence or imagination, but believers will point to the years of research and documented successes. Personally, I think it's one of those topics where you just have to experience it to believe it. But hey, don't take my word for it. Try it for yourself. There are tons of resources online for beginners to try their hand at remote viewing. And who knows, you might just surprise yourself with what you can tap into. All right, whether you're a total skeptic or you are ready to remote view your way into a top secret government bunker, one thing's for sure, this is a topic that's as fascinating as it is mysterious. If you've had experiences with remote viewing or are curious about trying it, drop me a message. I'd love to hear your thoughts or even host a follow-up episode with your stories. Thanks for tuning in to The Metaphysical Moment. Don't forget to subscribe, leave a review, and stay curious. Until next time, keep questioning everything, but especially yourself.